aligner. Yeah. And I made the suggestion. I said, uh, why couldn't I have a metal liner, just a pipe thing, to put down in this chimney and then run the pipe from the stove, have me some elbows. Mm-hmm. And I planned it out, and he said, well, that would just be fun. So I had... So you got it. Cheaper. I got it. I got it without lining it. Yeah. And I'm not uneasy about it. No, well, that's... I've had to have it done over twice. So. Now, when you said you said uh, uh, that they moved in here, was uh, did it have a floor to it? Yeah, it, it was. Uh, and they're all... And yet, they've been refloored, and they're all just as well as they can be. I wear it out in patches, you can see. But I just keep on wearing <laughs> <laughs> So uh, they moved, your your mother and daddy moved here and raised their family. That's right. We was all raised here. And how many brothers and sisters did you have? Three brothers and three sisters. Oh. And I was the youngest. You were, well? Yeah. So, this is, uh, pretty and I, uh, I, I'm glad that I could be able to be here with them in the last uh, 10 or 12 years when they needed somebody. So that oh. Fred and I, my husband and I moved here and... So we saw them too. Well, that's that's great. Uh, Virginia, my sister, was here uh, most of that time, and she she helped in different ways. But she didn't. Uh, she never uh, could go out and plan and plant the garden, and and I I'd go and help in the field when mm-hmm. it was necessary. I've raked lots of hay, and I've uh, uh, with a uh, rake, and then I dragged uh, literally thousands of shocks in to be. You know, we used to didn't we didn't know what a, a, a baler was. They stacked it, mm-hmm. and I'd hitch a horse to a and have a long chain in the single tree, and I'd go and work that uh, chain around a shock, and here I'd go with. The, Horse and shop. <laughs> uh, a lot. A lot we, we did most of our farming over there on the spread place. Is that right? Well, uh, now you were, uh, what, when were you born? Eight, uh, January the 13th, 1892. 1892. So you're 88. 89. 89. And, and you're still mowing your lawn, keeping house? And yes, ma'am. My great. Sort of playing with the house. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well now let's just uh, talk about this house. You know, there's a, there was a song a few years ago, this old house. Yeah, I've heard uh, it. And it, now, who owned the house before your folks moved here? Do you know? It was Mr. Thomas Duval. Did he build it? Have it built? I guess he did. I'm not sure, and I don't know how long it had been built. I mean, uh, uh, how long he had been in it. When my daddy got the place and the mm-hmm. house was on it, the reason I was I was wanting to point about how how pretty it is with the uh, beams in there, uh, exposed beams and what have you. And I believe you told me that a governor had eaten a yeah. meal here governor in Glenn, in R. B. Glenn. Governor what? R. B. Glenn. R. B. Glenn. Yeah. And so he's he ate in your home. <laughs> that ain't nothing. That's that's <laughs> interesting. That's very oh. interesting. So. Uh, well. Hey, this old house has seen a good family. And well, it, it it's seen it's seen a whole lot of rough winters and and rough times as that so far. Now, when when we grew up, we come up the hard way. Well, I I guess that's the way that that was the going thing, wasn't it in those days? It was all the way. Uh-huh. It they wasn't they wasn't easy ways. Doctor Wilcox up yonder had a family, and he was taking in money. And they were the talk of the uh, county almost uh, about having money and having nice horses and a buggy and going here and yonder. Now, if a man had a nice horse and buggy, that was like having a nice fine car, a Mercedes it, it, or something. It, it, was, uh, it was equal then to a Cadillac now, or more so. And, of course, the doctor could make money easier than... Uh, and uh, they didn't rob the people either. Is that right? No. But old Dr. Tom Jones come here almost by the year to see my mother when she was going through a long uh, spell, uh, weak, bad health. 
ever. And that sounded high then, but each trip was a dollar and a half. Dollar and a half. A dollar and a half. <laughs> each trip. And he had to ride a horseback. Oh, about. sure. And he'd come in here with leggings on and sometimes ice all on his uh, overshoes and his leggings and be out all day and sometimes part of the night. He'd go. He would go. He'd have gone if he hadn't paid him anything, wouldn't he? Yes. I guess yeah. he would have. I think he would. He might not could have kept it up, but I bet he, no. I bet he wouldn't have turned anyone down. He he? No, I don't. Th- well, a doctors can't turn them down if they offer the pay. But sometimes people back then didn't have the pay. Mm-hmm. There's lots. They they had to put lots of it on the book. And I guess sometimes they'd pay in, in a ham or a right. eggs or it chickens just, or anything yeah, like that. Uh-huh. Just so, uh, some kind of produce. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, I was talking with your brother, too, about how, uh, in sickness, how hard it was on the family sometimes to have to do the, all the nursing and setting oh, up well, with them. I know it. And we, we were blessed when my daddy was sick a long time. We started staying up with him the 5th of September, and he lived on till the 2nd of January. But our neighbors, uh, sis, you knew Sister Ashley, mm-hmm. the picture. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, yeah. And his father-in-law lived right across over there, Cicero Baldwin, Cicero's wife's daddy. Mm-hmm. And those two men figured more and put in more time here uh, helping with my daddy of a night than, than any other two people uh, besides the family. They they certainly did stick to us. And then others, now Edwin Eller, Ethel's husband, he was awful good, but he was tied to the mm-hmm. post office. And right through some of the uh, the worst of it was uh, he was having to work Christmas mail. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Cicero, uh, but Cicero Baldwin and Cicero Ashley, and they'd, uh, they'd sort of skip. One of them stay, say, tonight with somebody maybe that hadn't stayed but a night or two. They had, they had worked here for my daddy, and he had, he had helped them to get their places. Mm-hmm. And so uh, one of them, if one of them was here, he was the foreman. Mm-hmm. And, but my daddy had a little rather Sister Old Baldwin would handle him than anybody else. He said he knew better. He said, Sister Old Baldwin is just gifted, and he knows just a little is bit. That, what I, was wrong with your dad? Well, he had a he he just got sick one summer, and he wouldn't eat, and he looked so bad. And when we took him, he wouldn't hardly agree to go to the hospital. Carl Eller, Doctor Carl Eller, was his nephew, and he had been a coming to see him, and we we insisted that he and Carl did too that we take him up and let Doctor Dean. Uh, give him a blood transfusion and uh, we took him up there and these two Cicero's went with us and Jess and Virginia and I of course went to see whose blood would match well they tested it all and all three of us children our blood he could have had it but I thought Dr. Dean Jones did uh, well uh, he was always a friend Mm -hmm. anyway he x-rayed him and he just called Virginia and me in a little go-out place out of way to the old hospital. He said, he's got a cancer in here that big in his stomach. He said, that's his trouble. And uh, we asked him then, well, what do you think of giving him a blood transfusion? He said, if he doesn't have any bad uh, uh, relapse, It'll pep pep him up for two or three days, and then he'll go right back. He said, that in there will consume his blood. But he said he may have a bad bad, uh, back set if he Mm -hmm. takes it. And uh, I just said, well, what's your best advice on it, Dr. Jones? He said, well, I don't advise it, but he said, I'll give it if you all say so. And we just didn't have it. We just didn't give it, uh, put him through. He said, if he has a bad uh, uh, back set over it, you need to be surprised. Well, no. It's... And we just didn't have it. But mm-hmm. that was uh, early in September, or maybe the last of August. And 
he lived on then. He sort of picked up a little again. He lived till the 2nd of January. Then that, it got him. Oh, he swelled. His bug got gone, and he just, he was in bad shape, but he kept August to, of course, you walked uh, Oh, the yes. low log uh, school, yeah. and your teacher was Joe Weaver. Yeah, uh, you said, and he was a brother to Joshua. That's right. Who? And uh, uh, Mr. James, the preacher. Uh huh. And who was their daddy? I never told.